another update. I think we're up to, what, number nine now, I think. We've gotten quite a bit done. We had some issues the other day that we had to take care of, but uh, we've got most of the sound system installed. 1200 watt four channel amp on the left side. 1200 watt at four ohm uh, mono sub amp on the right. 12 inch Pioneer dual voice coil champion stuffed in the box there which seals into the cab so that there's very little vibration in the trunk so I don't have the sound dead in this thing because it just adds weight. Had a little oil spill this morning so we're cleaning that up. We've installed a period correct Clarion cassette deck with six disc changer and it all works. That's currently got some uh, Steve Miller band in there. You can see that uh, after getting into the, some heat during the uh, wonderful summers we've had that have been over a hundred degrees or for you folks uh, in the metric areas uh, over 40 degrees uh, it, it did uh, give me a couple warps there along the weld pretty minor stuff though no kinks or anything I'll be able to work those out pretty easily got everything primered you'll notice we now have an interior in here um, I was able to score a decent set of Recaro trophies. They got a, a little wear here and there. There's a spot. And down here by the seat belt's a spot and a little burn. But overall, it's full set of seats. The rears are in really nice shape. I've modded the console here. Get it in focus for you. The Serio normally sits up here. I don't like it because you can never see when the sun shines on it. So I have modded my console to put it down here. These are all parts just from a scrapyard. I built a little metal bracket that I screwed down from the inside. Holds it nice and stable. It stays put during the bumps, so good to go. Got some factory fill speakers put in. Passat steering wheel. this thing to focus. Got some ugly door cards on there. The cloth is peeling. And uh, so right now they're just primer gray. I'd eventually like to do what I've done with the rears. The rears I have used what's called stone paint. And uh, you coat it on there nice and thick. I do have some touch-ups there after the crash because these were done before the crash. Uh, once these this sprayed, um, you let it cure and then you hit it with like a satin clear coat. Just nice and thick layers and layers of clear coat and it comes back looking like a resin granite uh, very very sharp looking um, we experimented on a friend's mark IV golf and it turned out really nice so that is our plan we're going to be doing that here hopefully soon but i wanted to primer them so they weren't just the raw wood with adhesive ugliness on it a uh, question for anybody who may know this is the door sticker that is from the donor car, that's the sticker from my old GTI. The original sticker was severely damaged. That whole portion was just crushed. Does anyone know if I can get that reprinted? Like say from the dealership or something like that um, so that I can put the correct sticker back on? Uh, if you do have any idea about that, please leave a comment because I would like to do that. I want to try to make this as legit as possible for a, a poor man who's doing it on his own. We've got the new grill in, ECS tuning, uh, $45 US badgeless grill. It's not a flawless fit, but it does look pretty good. I'm not going to paint it yet. I'm gonna see how the plastic lasts, just to kinda, just to kinda see how things are doing. We've got uh, genuine crosshair headlights with the H4 bulbs in them. These are hyper white bulbs, so they'll really brighten things up. And then we get to the complication that we had. While picking up some stuff for my kids across the uh, Missouri River at their grandma's house, the motor finally let go. I had never had a chance to time the previous engine properly. Uh, that was an, an ABA engine block, uh, basically out of the salvage yard, with the 1.8 8-valve Digifont head on it from the donor car that basically donated most of its guts to the original build of this and uh, 
the timing was never quite right. Um, it would ping under heavy throttle and it lasted for three years. I'm not going to complain the, the little thing, uh, it did pretty good for being a junkyard motor with no more money in it than a head gasket. I even reused the old, uh, studs, which is a big no, no on these engines. You always put new studs in, but it lasted three years. And then finally the number three cylinder, uh, had a little too much heat. It, uh, popped a ring on the, uh, top of the piston which blew the top of the piston off and it pretty well chewed up the block beat the bottom of the head to death pistons got a hole in it so that motor's dead but this one was in the process of being rebuilt in my basement and so uh, I just had a reason to finish it a little bit quicker it is again uh, you don't know if you can really see it Let's see if we can lighten it up it is an ABA block it's easy to tell because it's got this big stupid breather thing on the front there. I've got just a sensor plugging off where the tube goes. But uh, ABA block, it's an early model from a 95, so it has the extra oil squirters inside, which is nice. Um, it is the Mexico block, so it does not have the forged crank. If you can get an early ABA block, 93-94 uh, year, from Germany, those came with forged cranks in them. And uh, those work really well if you want to build a nice heavy engine. Uh, just using the head here, it's another Digifont head um, off of a Cabriolet. The head is exactly the same. If it's a Digifont head, it's a Digifont head. It doesn't matter which direction the intake went or anything like that. Bolts on. Uh, decided to do something a little different with the uh, the valve cover. We used uh, Rust-Oleum hammered effect paint, which uh, leaves kind of a nice look there. It's it's kind of a wrinkle finish. It's you know, kind of got a little bit of a gloss uh, flake in it, um, but uh, it's a it's a nice sharp look. Looks pretty good. Uh, takes forever to cure. It took like two days for that to cure, and it's still wrinkled just a little bit when I put the uh, the valve cover straps on. But uh, we just got finished doing the original break in. Um, about 30 miles or so of really hard driving. People say, oh, break it in nice and easy. No, that is a no-no. Break it in hard, like you're racing it. What The, the purpose of the break-in isn't for the bearings or any of that kind of stuff. That has nothing to do with the break-in. The break-in is all about the rings. Well, after you hone a cylinder, those hone marks act as a very fine file inside the cylinder. And as the piston goes up and down, those hone marks actually file against the rings in the piston. And if you go lightly, it lightly files those rings. If you really put the beans to her, it builds a lot of compression in the cylinder and forces those rings out tightly, which gives them a better cut against that cylinder. Um, I've done a lot of reading online, um, talked to several guys that build race engines professionally, like that is their job, and that's how they break in every single motor they build, including their private vehicles. They run them hard, and uh, you know, 25 to 30 miles of slow it down, and then punch it, run it through the gears. You know, obviously you got to stay within legal limits, so if you can find a, an open highway where you're not going to annoy anybody for constantly slowing way down, you know, keep it under the speed limit, keep it safe. Um, try to do your break-in where nobody's at. If you have access to like an old abandoned runway, then by all means, that is an awesome place to do it. But it's hard throttle, go through the gears, slow it down. Hard throttle, go through the gears, slow it down. 25 or 30 miles of that. Uh, I was, I could actually notice a difference in this engine after doing that. It tightened up. Uh, the throttle response was much crisper. Uh, the idle smoothed out just a little bit. Um, and uh, when you really give it the beans off the line, um, these uh, skinny little tires, it really struggles to, to grip even without popping the clutch. You know, ease out and then punch it and it'll still rip them loose. So um, it does do a good job breaking in. Now you'll see the engine bay, it's kind of ugly. This is a daily driver. The chassis has about 170,000 miles on it, so it is not perfect but uh, it is extremely reliable, extremely easy to work on. Um, I actually manually lifted that engine block into the car without a jack or anything like that. It weighs, with the clutch, I've been told, around 300 pounds. So if that tells you I'm kind of a farm boy type. But uh, it's not hard to work on. The cylinder head is extremely light, even with the intake. 
transmission only weighs about 60 pounds so you know working on it is extremely easy you can see I've got new connecting arms back in there yeah, you can kind of kind of see the shininess there you go uh, those are very cheap from uh, rockauto.com uh, check those guys out for little bushing replacement kits little arms uh, tightens the shifter up really nice um, polyurethane bushings from Meisterworks uh, I mentioned them uh, prior to tearing everything apart here you see I don't have my sticker anymore it's a different door but uh, Meisterworks uh, got me hooked up with a full set of uh, red polyurethane bushings for the whole suspension um, it uh, it handles better than a new car the steering is tight the response is tight the brakes are tight everything on this car feels brand new and uh, hopefully before too long my goal is maybe by before the winter hits uh, she's going to look brand new again as well uh, one concern if anybody has any ideas the uh, crinkle in the bumper here I do like my skinny bumpers I do like the red stripe um, if anybody has any recommendations as to how to kind of repair that I'm okay if I have to smooth out the bumper or paint it or something like that that's not a big deal I can do that but just uh, I want it to be something that lasts you know I don't want to have to constantly redo it or whatever so if anybody has any ideas on how to make that look good and stay nice um, leave a comment but yeah here here is the little girl the lady in red will be changing her name after we get her painted but uh, she'll have to tell us what kind of name she wants but uh, if you guys like this give me a like any questions comments suggestions anything like that let me know in the comments and as we do more work to her we'll uh, throw up some more updates peace out